My name is Palian Chinguo. I come from Malawi, uh, which is uh, a little country in the heart of Africa. Um, basically, we're here for the British Council program, and uh, we get in touch with um, our brother Lenz, and we talk about the historical connection between Malawi and Jamaica. Uh, basically, I would say we had um, we have our national hero, the first national hero, is called John Chilembwe. Um, he uh, was part of the Africa for the Africans campaign way back in the 1897. Uh, then he traveled to USA for for education. He came back in 1900. When he came back, he started mobilizing the people uh, to stand against the colonial government, the British colonial government, until around 1914 when the First World War started. He stood against the First World War in the sense that it was a European war uh, uh, within which Africans were used as pawns to fight that war, so he was totally against that war. And um, the British colonial government uh, was did not like him on that on that ground, and um, because the only alternative was uh, to take up arms and fight against the British colonial government, because the talks failed, everything dialogue t failed, and they picked up arms. He organized an uprising, which is uh, normally called the Chilembwe uprising in the history books. Then they started with the fight against the British colonial government. But unfortunately, they were overpowered. He was on the run, he ran away towards the border. He was running away towards the border of Mozambique and Malawi. Uh, the, British, the British government, the British colonial government, uh, put up a fee or a, a, a price tag uh, as a reward of 20 pounds for anyone who uh, would come forward to say he had seen or he had come into contact with John Chirembwe, which would lead to the arrest uh, of John Chirembwe. Unfortunately, that did not materialize, but the colonial troops managed to uh, trace him and capture him and shot him dead. So we had uh, some followers or some uh, Africans who were part of the Chirembwe uprising. They were arrested, jailed, uh, tried in, 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 a, in, a, in a court and uh, executed, most of them were executed. And um, what is um, uh, of particular interest in this regard, which makes, which brings in the connection between Malawi and Jamaica, is that the Chief Justice who presided over the case of the uh, comrades or the Africans who were part of the children were rising, was the very same person who also sentenced Leonard Howell of Jamaica to jail. His name was Robert Grant. After um, some time working in Malawi or in Nyasaland, as it was commonly called then, he was transferred to Jamaica to work as a magistrate or a resident magistrate or a chief justice, something like that. So he was the first, he was the same person who tried and sentenced Leonard Howe in Jamaica to, to jail in 1930s, mid 1930s, thereabout. So that's the connection between um, uh, Malawi and Jamaica as far as history is concerned. Um, a lot of, we have had a lot of Jamaicans coming to Malawi for a visit, especially the Rastafari brethren and sisters. What is also of particular interest about Malawi is that Emperor Haile Selassie the first visited Malawi in 1965 on the 2nd of August. Uh, he stayed there for two days, and one of the places he visited or he set his foot on was a mountain plateau, which is called Zomba Plateau or Zomba Mountain. And uh, there is a place called the Emperor's View. You can visit or you can travel across the world. There's no any other place around the world which is called the Emperor's View, after which was named after the visit of His Imperial Majesty. It is about 3,000 feet above sea level. And um, most of the groundations, the Bingi groundations, are held there. Uh, it's a significant place in the Rastafari movement. And most of the visitors, Rastafari bridges, especially from Jamaica, when they come to Malawi, they go to that place uh, in honor of His Imperial Majesty, to give Isis some thanks to His Imperial Majesty. So that's the, another 
uh, connection of Malawi to the Rastafari faith. Um, and um, we also have a street which is called the Haile Selassie Road. Uh, this was a road which was, was also named after his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie. Uh, so these are the, uh, the two notable points which I would make mention of about Malawi and Jamaica. And um, uh, that's it. Message of solidarity. Message of solidarity. Okay. Uh, this means that we are all one and we have to come together as Africans. In unity, there's strength. And to all those Africans in diaspora, I would say the issue of repatriation consider Malawi as one of the possible destinations for your home as, uh, as Africa because it's a peaceful country, it's the country which is warm and has got you know, all those connections with uh, other cultures or other people, African people from who are scattered across the world. And Jamaica, for, for example, is a very good example of how uh, one of the countries or one of the lands in the Caribbean islands is linked to this little country called Malawi. So those of you who are thinking heavily on repatriation, think about Malawi as a possible destination, especially the Rastafari Greatness. Malawi is a very good place for you to be, very significant in the Rastafari movement as well. Yeah, we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yeah, good, 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 good. Beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, that's it.